And welcome back to Tech Tuesday. I'm Steve Leahy. So today's Tech Tuesday is all about composition. Uh, how I use composition to kind of show people what I feel is important in the painting, to kind of lead them around the painting, uh, and just give a sense of movement to it when there isn't really movement there, or different things like that. So there are a set of um, kind of foundational rules, if you will, for composition. So I'm going to show you some of those. Um, as is with all art, um, art is meant to be uh, kind of manipulated and you take those rules and you break them uh, in a lot of ways to make your own art. So the trick is, is knowing those rules to start. Um, if you break the rules and you didn't know you broke them, it's uh, not quite the same as if it was intentional. So we're going to uh, give you a little bit of basics on that and uh, get you up to speed. So let's switch over and um, we'll get things going. Be right back. There we go. <clears throat> All right. So what I do is uh, I just have this blank piece of paper. So I'm going to show you a couple things real quick. Um, so if you have a canvas or a, a really anything, let's just say this is the area that you're uh, you're working in right here. So there is a basic um, a basic rule of composition that anything there are really important parts of this 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 image this this surface here. Uh, and certain areas will draw way more attention than others. For instance, anything that's put directly in any of the corners will immediately draw the eye down there to, to a, a great extent. Um, so if you put something right down in the corner, the eye is automatically going to be drawn to that. The other thing, obviously, is the direct center. So if you draw you know, the, the X in the middle, anything in the dead center of that is going to demand all the attention. So knowing that, Again, this is one of those instances where knowing the rule allows you to break it. So generally, um, in, in art, they, they would recommend to you not to put anything in any of those five spots because it demands all the attention and you'll lose anything else that's going on in the image. Um, however, if there is something that you really, really want someone to look at, putting stuff in those spots will do just that. It'll just immediately have them lock in for that. Um, the same thing, I drew the lines here because the same thing really happens along these lines as well. Anything that moves into these corners or draws across the center like this um, will also demand a lot of attention. Not as much as the direct corners of your image or the immediate center, but still putting something evenly on those on those lines will, will do it as well. Um, so that's number one as far as the spots go. For general rules, you, I'm sure you've heard, uh, if you've been into this, the, uh, the thirds rule. So basically when you have a canvas or you know whatever you happen to be working on, if you divide that canvas into three parts, those are the spots where you can kind of put things to kind of give a good feel for the painting. Again, these are general things that have been kind of slowly shown over years and years of of um, what we probably consider successful art, I guess. Um, it just, uh, it's just one of those things that really adds a lot of interest and balance, even though um, you, you're divided it into three. So, for instance, you know, if you have a landscape, if you put that horizon line directly in the center of the image, like this, it's going to give a very even and static feel to it. And the, our, our brain likes repetition with variation. So what this is, is you have two exactly the same rectangles, and, and our brain just kind of settles. It just kind of, it's very calming, but it also isn't very exciting. So if you're looking to add some, some interest to your painting, putting a horizon line directly across the center is not going to do that. Now, if you really want to give that feeling of um, calmness and serenity and uh, static, feeling, then, then it's, it's, it's a good rule to break. Um, but it, you got to be careful with it, again, because it'll, it'll really level out and, 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 and just kind of cause your painting to feel almost monotonous. On the other side of that, if you have a landscape and you say maybe have all the, the land down here and sky up here, then that gives a, a it's, you have similar shapes, you have these rectangles, but they are different now in the way that they, their, their size is. And that repetition with variation will give you that kind of, um, you know, that just that kind of little bit more interest. Let me show you an example of that. So in this painting here of, of my old studio, back you up a little bit. 
um, I use that two-thirds method. So there's two-thirds of the area is the ground, and the one-third up at the top is the sky. And that leads you into that painting. So it, it gives you this chance to kind of start at the bottom and move into it. If I divided it half and half, it would almost have you stand outside the painting and just just wait there, you know, it doesn't it doesn't have the same movement as this kind of drawing in that that's splitting it. Now you can certainly go the other direction. You can have one third of the land and you know two thirds of the sky. That works too. It'll give that really big feeling to that painting, uh, really wide open feeling. This has a more condensed feeling because you're looking more at the ground than at the sky. So it works really well. Uh, I'll give you another example. This one isn't two thirds. This is a little bit, well, it's a lot different. This is the painting of that I did, or actually a print of it, of Yarmouth, Massachusetts, a beach in Yarmouth. And I'm going to pull this up just a little bit because it's a little bit bigger. So this one doesn't use the two-thirds rule, but it uses uh, the golden ratio, which is a whole other video. Uh, but again, it, it basically does the same thing. You have this smaller area down here, and it's actually balanced against this larger area because there's not, I mean, there are clouds going on, but not as much fine detail as here. So it's really divided that way. So that just gives a little bit more interest. If I had divided this directly in half, you know, it wouldn't have the same feel to it. It wouldn't have that, that movement in the sky that I really wanted to kind of pull out. And uh, it would be more difficult to do if that was even with the ground and it was competing with the ground. So it just kind of shows you how that one-third rule can really work well. Now that one-third rule works with portraits as well. You would think a portrait, you just nail the person right in the center and you're done. So if you have a portrait, you can use that same thing. Now her eyes run right across, well, well roughly, run right across that one-third line. Uh, it's pushed down a little bit. Um, but you get the idea. So again, that for just a static portrait of, of just kind of someone in the middle of the canvas, by dividing it that way, it adds that, that little bit more interest. If I had blocked it off so it's just her face, it would have had a whole different feel to it. It would still read as a you know a portrait and you'd know who it is and all that, all that. But having that negative area and having down here and then having all the interest on that, roughly on that third line, um, really helps out a lot. Now, hopefully you've noticed in all these, again, I try to avoid everything in the corners. In this instance, her arm floats down there, but it's, there's no details down here. So it's, you know, you can get away with that. Uh, but again, anything like that will, will draw that eye down. If there was, if she was wearing, say, um, a patterned shirt that had, you know, actual details down here, that will, it'll draw your eye down in the corner. Uh, so you, you, again, I try to be real careful about not you know, really putting anything in there. All right. So let me show you a couple other examples, a little bit more complex type of thing. So you have a, a vehicle like a car. Um, so this one is same kind of deal. I could have centered this car in the middle of it, had equal space all around, and it would have had a very static feel to it. It would have looked like a product image basically you know something you'd see in a catalog for a product you know not really art you're just trying to tell exactly what that item is but i want some some you know kind of movement in this so the things i avoid again i avoid all the corners i don't want that and i want to make sure that there is even the horizon line doesn't really touch the corners as well i've tilted this so when i tilted it i want to make sure that it's not running directly corner to corner again that that will take We'll take the painting and give it more of a static feel. Even though this car isn't moving, I want to give it a feeling of movement, which is why I tilted it, and, uh, and that's how that works. So again, if you draw a line straight down the middle, almost nothing really is there other than the corner of that headlight. But even if you draw this across, the really middle of the canvas is right in the middle of this red field. So there's nothing really going on there, and that's, and that's, that's what I wanted. Again, if this little hood scoop was directly in the center of the image, if I slided this car over a little bit more, your eye would just be locked into that scoop in the front. And, uh, and, and again, if you want to draw attention to something, uh, it, then, then that's where you put it. Uh, but if you don't really want all the attention on that, uh, that's kind of how it goes. All right, so that's your super basic uh, perspective, oh, not perspective, sorry, composition type of... Uh, type of idea. Let me switch back here, <clears throat> that out of the way, and there we go. So I hope you enjoyed this. Again, it was super simple and really the basics, but it's just something to kind of get in your head. Uh, again, if you, 
if you get these kind of little basic rules down, um, it's easy to either use them or avoid them, meaning you know where you put things in the in the in the image, and it'll really add a lot to the painting. It's surprising how subtle it can be. Uh, you don't really notice it, but um, but your the viewer's brain will pick up on it. So I hope this helped. Um, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. If you have any ideas for any other Tech Tuesdays, if things are bothering you, well, art things, uh, just uh, drop them in the comments and um, we'll uh, put it on the list of things to cover. So for Steve Leahy and Tech Tuesday, I will uh, catch you guys all on the next one.